Sup guys, Hit King here again, bringing you another news segment. Uh, remember to like and subscribe guys, please, it helps, please do. And yeah, today we're going to talk about Resident Evil 9. So yes, Resident Evil 9 news. So yeah, if you've seen my uh, outrage video, you'll know that I mentioned that there was some Resident Evil, out, uh, Resident Evil 9 news that came with the uh, 4chan rumor. So we're going to read that part now. Uh, I might as well read a lot of it here, actually. But, uh, yeah. Uh, no DLC for RE8 besides the Dulux Edition and RE-verse content. So, uh, yeah. Um, we'll see how true that is during uh, Capcom's game show because uh, that's supposed to be RE8 related. Uh, here we go. This is our first info regarding RE9. Rose is not the main character of RE9. That scene was inspired by the post credit scene in Pirates of the Caribbean and is just meant to give closure. So I'm so confused by that. Uh, the scene at the end of RE8 was inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean. What? What, the Pir what, Pirates 3? Where, where Will Sizzy's, uh, where Will Jr. Sizzy's dad coming back? That was, that was, that's supposed to be the inspiration? I don't get it, that's stupid. Um, that would be really stupid if they don't follow that up. But at the same time, I, I guess it could have been so because a lot of, a lot of the RE games do end in a certain way and they don't follow up with it. I mean, Resident Evil Five uh, Lost in Nightmares, for example, set up Alex Wesker, but she appeared in Revelations Two, not Resident Evil Six, you know. And Resident Evil Six was this whole different other game. Do you know what I mean so? And yeah, it, it could be possible, but a lot of rumors said that this was going to be a trilogy, that like a Winter's trilogy. So I don't know if to believe that or not. Um, we will return to Rose eventually, but there is no big time skip coming up. Okay, okay. So Resident Evil 9 is not going to be a time skip game. It's going to take place... I, okay. Um, Resident Evil 9... Here we go. Resident Evil 9 Apocalypse. So apparently, if you guys remember, that is supposed to be the title for the game, which was supposed to come out or planned to come out in 2023. But I don't think that's happening anymore because Resident Evil 4 Remake is supposedly coming out in 2023. So, Resident Evil 9 Apocalypse will most likely come out in 2024. Unless that hunk game didn't get scrapped and that's going to come out instead. But yeah, Resident Evil 9 Apocalypse will star the original four. Chris, Claire, Leon, Jill, and each have their own section. Semi-open world-like village, made to be the big final for the story of the original cast, uh, 2024. I feel like there was more info there, but that we didn't get to read. But yeah, that is very, very interesting. So Resident Evil 9 is supposedly going to be the final numbered entry in the Resident Evil series. And it's going to star the original four main characters. Chris, Leon, Jill, and Claire. Which would be freaking awesome if that happens. And and each is going to have their own section. It's going to be... For, okay, first of all, I am getting a bit of a flashback to Resident Evil 6. Now, I do enjoy Resident Evil 6. Uh, for what it is, but I am disappointed because it could have been so much more, um, and they kind of screwed the pooch with that. Uh, while while I did enjoy the interconnected uh, individual storylines, a lot uh, a lot of the sections were pretty much very similar. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the control schemes and that. You know, if it was me making it, like I've already said, I would have had one be like survival horror, another be sort of like Resident Evil Four, and the other one being sort of first person, maybe. You know, like like that. But uh, yeah, this is very interesting. Like, what, so that means we're getting four campaigns. Then each is going to be sort of semi-open world, similar to Village. Um, this could be true. It could be true because there is new rumors out now saying or suggesting that the game is going to be coming out very, very late, and that it started development very early, in fact, and that this would make it the longest Resident Evil game in development. And if it is a very long developed game, it would make sense too that it would be very big. But uh, yeah, let's read that stuff there, which is from Dust Garland, by the way, that he posted. But yeah. So this is the info where he talks about this. Uh, how long has Resident Evil 9 been in dev? Uh, by a user on Twitter. And then Dust replies, RE9 started dev in 2018. When it releases, it'll be by far the RE game that's been in dev the longest. Probably about six to seven years of development. So yeah, uh, if you think that's, uh, you know, donkey balls uh you have to keep in mind capcom themselves confirmed that resident evil 8 village entered development six months before resident evil 7 came out now if i remember correctly resident evil 7 came out in early of 2017 
which would mean that Resident Evil 8 entered development towards the end of 2016. So that game was in development for essentially five five years, if you if you count it like that. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, that game was essentially in development for five years, or at least four four years and a few months. And Resident Evil 9 apparently has been in development for longer than that. Um, which, again, if the rumours are that this is supposed to be a big game, it would add up. Uh, so when when do you think we'll hear about RE9? Next year at an event or 2023? And DOS says years away. Now, obviously, we're not going to hear anything next year. Because uh, most likely 2022 is going to be re reserved for RE4 Remake. Which will release in 2023. So that get well, well, yeah, definitely we'll get like a, if if outrage if outrage is definitely coming out at the end of this year, we'll most likely get some trailers leading up for all the platform releases next year. But the big game that Capcom will most likely focus on next will be Ori 4 Remake. So I do see that being the game that we'll get news and an announcement reveal for in towards the end, or maybe even E3 in 2022 for a release in 2023. And we don't know if that's going to be late or not. I honestly think this depends on how long development for RE9 might be. They might look at it in a way where it's like, to be fair, the game has gone into a rebooted development stage. I can see the game easily coming out late 2023, which would add up with the sort of timing, do you know what I mean? So uh, if that comes out late 2023, I'm positive most likely that Resident Evil 9 Apocalypse will be at 20 for release. Which would mean that the game would have been in development by, let's see, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 years at least. No, no, yeah, that is a long development time. That is a long development time, but it would add up, really. It would add up, actually. Um, coming out in 2025? Maybe not. Because if this game has been in development as, as long as they say it has, as long as he says it has, anyway, I can see it definitely coming out around that time. Um, is it true that RE9 is supposed to wrap up some threads and character stories? And Doss says, I've literally been saying that since spring of 2020. I had heard in early 2020 they were moving away from numbered entries after RE9. RE8 and RE9 were planned together story-wise, and I personally highly suspect they wanted RE9 to be a closer for several things in the franchise. Okay. To see ultimately what happens, they could change their minds. But I do think moving away from numbered entries just makes logical sense. With annual releases, they'll basically have to have two numbered RE games in dev all the time, which might cause problems long term. So yeah, that kind of makes sense. That would actually make a lot of sense because Im imagine, imagine you're making a uh, RE10 and then uh, you're making RE11 at the same time, and then you release RE10 and then like six months later or something, or next year you release RE11. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't really flow too well, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's usually a long wait when you're waiting for the next numbered release of a title, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it, it would make sense that uh, they, they sort of look at this and they're like, the series has been around for very, very long. You know, there's been a lot of characters. Let's wrap this up. Let's just, let's put an end to it. Let's finish everything. Let's finish off these main character stories. And then from now on, we'll do we'll subtitles like uh, Outrage. Or they'll make other remakes like Cold Veronica, maybe, hopefully, you know. I you know, God, hopefully they will make a remake for that. Um, but yeah, the, it's interesting that Dosk himself says this, that this game is supposed to be like a closure and that it was being made around the same time as RE8. It makes sense that they were sort of doing that. They were looking at RE8 and seeing where the story goes. But it doesn't add up with what the other, with what the uh, uh, 4chan rumor says, that the game is not going to continue Rose's storyline. Now, it could be a case that, yeah, uh, uh, RE, RE8... You know, again, because that game into development six months before RE7 came out. So I mean, at, at that point in time, they probably didn't have a good idea of where they wanted the story to go. And when they did, they were like, okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue up from where RE, where RE7 left off. And it makes sense. They did that. They wrapped up Ethan's storyline. They also did set up a lot of things in RE8, which was, uh, you know, if we're going to connect Chris to it, it's mainly the Chris connections and BSA plot line. And it would probably make sense if something big happens uh, between that event and the uh, epilogue or, uh, you know, uh, the ending of RE8 that Chris would end up, like, bringing in, uh, you know, Leon, 
and, and, and maybe, maybe Chris gets attacked, maybe he gets in prison, maybe he goes missing, and that's why Claire comes in looking for her brother. And she contacts Jill, who comes in helping her, and then she goes to Leon, and that, that will end up going into like this storyline where they're trying to find Chris, they rescue him, and they're taking on the connections, and uh, they're going to take on the BSA maybe, maybe there's a corrupted side to the BSA that they need to take care of, and that will sort of be like this uh, over circle reach. And then the game ends in a way that it goes maybe back to the uh, post credit scene of RAA setting up this new future now, this now time skip. Because we know Chris is alive post uh, RAA. We know he's alive because of that end credit scene. So obviously he survives. But we don't know what happens to the other characters. We still don't know where Jill is. We don't know what the hell she's doing. Uh, Claire, you know, the last time we saw her in game, present time was Revelations 2. And Leon, same thing. We don't know really what he's up to since the end of Resident Evil 6. Uh, it would be very interesting if, if, if Leon uh, it does show up, but then Ada doesn't. So that's a bit weird, you know, because whenever Leon's in a game, Ada's always there. So I'm wondering if this is going to be, especially if they say they want to wrap up plot lines. I mean, when you sit down and you, and you think to yourself, I'm going to wrap up Leon's story. Leon's story is usually associated and connected with Ada's. So if you're going to bring Leon back, it makes logical sense to bring Ada in. And if you're going to, like, sort of wrap up Claire's storyline, obviously, you know, her story is very connected with... At least from an emotional level, it would be connected with Chris. So it would kind of make sense to maybe give us that Ori game that uh, brings the two siblings back together and sort of closes off their storylines and what they've been doing and how they feel about each other. Personally, I would hope that Sherry would make a cameo, maybe. But, you know, I, I guess that's a bit too much to ask for. And Joel has obviously not been around for years. And this would be the perfect time to bring it in as well. Like, if this is going to be the final 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 in terms of these characters and, and their storylines, Jill has to come back, okay? She has to come back and we need to see what's going on with her because it's it's been years, guys. It's been it's been since 2020... Yeah, 2009. 2009 since we last saw Jill in present time in the storyline, in the continuity, so yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, I'm, I'm liking what I'm reading here, again. I, I, like, I, like I usually do, I do like what I'm reading here about Resident Evil 9. Uh, I would be disappointed if Rose didn't show up. Um, I mean, if I had to choose, I, but then that's the thing, isn't it? That's the repetitive, the repetitiveness of it. You can't bring Rose back and have her be the MacGuffin again. She already got captured and then she got saved. For them to repeat that would be very repetitive, actually. So maybe they're going to keep the connections uh, storyline with Rose and Mia's character. And they're going to do... They're going to focus and jump right into that whole BSA Super Soldier bioweapon stuff that they set up at the end of RE8. And that's what's going to be the big focus of RE9. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I would be disappointed if we didn't get, uh, if we didn't go back to the connection storyline. Because obviously that's supposed to be the, the, I guess, the glue holding it together, right? I mean, they were set up at the end of RE7 uh, with the DLC. Uh, and they were obviously into that. And was somewhat basically responsible for the events that happened in seven and eight, even if their role in eight was actually technically small. But um, yeah, it, it it would be weird. You know I mean you set this uh, evil organization up? You know, you've even set up uh, the potential villain for it. You can't sort of ignore that. And yeah, I would like to see that concluded. Even if Rose is not involved, maybe they can do another thing and maybe tie it in that way. But again, we'll have to wait and see what they're doing with that. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm liking what I'm reading. But at the same time, it's like it's like this. Oh my god! Like we're gonna have we're gonna have to be waiting years before you can see stuff from this game. And as you all know, Resident Evil games go through a lot of development change. Like um, these games always get paused, cancelled, scrapped, and changed and done again. So even even if what we read here is what what the game is supposedly gonna be, that might not be the case when it finally comes out because it could be very different. But yeah, uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. And obviously. If, if we want to know if this is legit, we just have to wait and see if the rumors regarding Outrage are true. If the rumors for Outrage are true, then that means I guess this is going to be legit as well. But again, we'll have to wait and see. This is always a waiting game, as it were. And you always have to take these things with a grain of salt. But yeah, I'm liking personally what I'm reading. And I can't wait to play it when the time comes. Uh, but for now, focus is going to be on Outrage. And then after that, it's going to be RE4 Remake. And then hopefully, maybe if enough of us... Uh, complain and tell Capcom that we want a Cold Veronica remake, we might end up getting that. And then the big question comes down to, are they going to remake the Resident Evil remake? Or are they going to remake Resident Evil 5 and 6 perhaps? I've got a lot of good ideas for what they could do with a remake regarding Resident Evil 5 and 6 if they ever decided to go back into that. But that's, that's probably a video for another time. 
Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this. As always, remember to like and subscribe. Namaste. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and...